We just had a water break. <laughs> Now we had a, we lost power, and I'm glad that you're still there. So we talked about uh, Jesus as God, which was affirmed by the Scripture, and also confirmed by the prophets and the apostles. Also, that Jesus Himself claimed that He is God. And we proceeded to the last one, which was uh, the, the, the disciples, the early Christians, early church leaders during the time actually proclaim him as the son of God. No? And one of them was actually Polycarp. Polycarp was a bishop at the church in Smyrna. And he was a disciple of John. <clears throat> This is what he wrote in one of his uh, writings to the church. He said, Now may the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ and the eternal high priest himself, the son of God, Jesus Christ, build you up in faith and truth and to us with you. And to all those under heaven who will yet believe in our Lord and God, Jesus Christ, and His Father who raised Him 
from the dead. This was a testimony uh, from one of the church leaders which actually got the message from the scriptures and from John himself, the apostle of Christ. Another testimony from uh, one of the early Christian apologists, and a Christian apologist is the one who defends the faith, the, ones who give, the one who give, uh, gives answer to those who are asking about what we believe and why we believe what we believe. So this is Tertullian. <clears throat> he said, For God alone is without sin, and the only man without sin is Christ, since Christ is also God. And uh, lastly, this is uh, from Hippolytus of Rome. Uh, Hippolytus from Rome is a third century theologian and also believed to be the disciple of Irenaeus, who was a disciple of Polycarp, who was a disciple of John. So you see the discipleship from different generation to generation. And this is what he said as an early uh, third century theologian <clears throat> for, for all the righteous and the unrighteous alike shall be brought before God the Word. And we talked about this a while ago where the scripture talks about Jesus Christ as the Word, the Word of God himself. So after knowing all this, that Jesus is God indeed. And there are so many ways to approach this, but this is just a simple way of doing that just for us to see in a glimpse uh, from the scriptures and the early writings of the early church leaders and fathers of the church, that Jesus Christ himself is God. So the question now is, what now? So what now? No? What should we and how should we respond? What is it to me? What is it to you, knowing all these facts? You know, we are people who should be uh, thankful because we have the, the information in uh, the internet, no, we, we can just browse all the internet uh, of all the truth, the things that we want to know. A while ago, we were trying to make the generator work. Uh, we had to Google it and all. Everything is in the internet. But you see, the hard part there is to distinguish truth from the gray areas of lies. And the only way to do that is to go deeper for the things that are credited to be uh, infallible and no error. You have to check the, the credibility of the source. Because truth matters. Now, who, would, who among you would want to live a lie? Who among you would, be, would want to be lied to? That uh, people would be lying in your face. No? It hurts when people lie in your face. We always want the truth. But sadly, we give seldom truth statements to people. We demand the truth, but we don't give the truth. And so we jeopardize how we live our lives because we're living a double standard life. And when it comes to our faith, there was a boy who was actually interviewed live by one of the evangelists. And he was asking this boy of the question, are you spiritual? He was asked, if, are you spiritual? And the boy was struggling. His answer, he said, yeah, I care about my, my neighbors. I care about my family. Then he was asked again, are you spiritual? No, I, I believe in myself from deep within. That's what, how he answered. Then the evangelist prompted by saying, no, I'm talking about your faith in God. Do you believe in God? And he said, God for me is universal. He said, he was ranting and all. Then the evangelist prompted more and saying, do you believe that you are a good person? And he said, yeah, I'm a good person. Uh, then he was asked, okay, so if you don't mind, allow me to ask if you've lied in your life. And he said, yeah, I lied a couple of times. Then what do you call that person who lies? He said, a liar. And he said, have you uh, cheated in your class? He said, sometimes, yeah. And he said, so what do you call that? He said, a cheater. Have you stolen something? He said, yeah, when I was younger. So what do you call yourself that? He said, a thief. A thief. And he said, you know, we seldom think of ourselves as good, but actually when we are facing God, we get to face the truth that we are actually, in fact, sinners uh, before God in need of a Savior. And he was telling the boy of, you know, 
the, 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 the wages or the, the payment for those sin that you've committed because you're a liar, a, a thief, a cheater, and whatnot, is death. Separation from life. And you will be forever. Uh, be away in the presence of God, which you call universal, which you call love. And you will be away and you, have, you will have no life. Then the boy started crying. And he said, have you heard of uh, the good news of this? And he said, uh, no, no, what was that? And he said, the good news here is that you cannot pay your sins, pay for your sins. And the boy was questioning, you know, you know his face was questioning, no? what, what do you mean? And he said, you cannot pay for your sins, but God did by giving his one and only son. Because see, you cannot pay for your sins. You are a liar, a thief, and whatnot. And you are, you know, you should be paying all these things. You should be punished. But God loved you so much that he paid your sins by sending his son to die on the cross, which you should have died. But he died himself instead of you. So that you will be paid, you will be redeemed, you will be saved. And you will be reconciled with God. He was crying. The boy was crying. So when we are prompted by the truth, all lies would just drop down. When we are faced with truth of what really matters in life, we get to really step back and think and to just ponder on what we truly believe. After knowing all this truth, of course, we could be indifferent with it. We don't mind. We don't care. But eventually in your life, you will have to care. Eventually in your life, you have to eventually be minding these things. So the question lies again, what now? Knowing that Jesus is God, how should we respond? Allow me to simply give you ABC, simple things to think about and to start with. First is, of course, to be aware and to admit in your heart that indeed you have sinned, that you are a sinner and you're not perfect. There's so many flaws in your life, and I for one know that, that I have myself, and I myself is a sinner. So many things in my life that are not glorifying to the Lord, not pleasing even to the eyes of the people. Is, so how should we respond knowing that Jesus is God? We are to admit that indeed we are sinners in need of a Savior because we, even though how good you are, you think you are, or how powerful or successful you are, you can never save yourself in the end. You can never save yourself. So admit that you are a sinner. To be honest to yourself. Now, I don't think you would lie to yourself. You would be a fool if you would be lying to yourself. So admit that you are a sinner. Second is to believe. Believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. And of course, we talked about that a while ago, of who Jesus is. Believing is coming from the root word, uh, Putting your trust. No? Faith and belief as actually coming from one root word. And to have faith is to believe in your heart. To put your trust not to yourself, but to the one and only who is trustworthy. And here, to respond to Jesus Christ as God, we are to believe. We are to put our trust in Jesus Christ who died on the cross for our sins. Because by believing, as our passage has said, if you believe, you will have eternal life. You will not perish. Believe. Believe in your heart. And lastly, to confess and to change. Confess in your mouth, in your life, that Jesus is Lord, meaning He is God. That's why it's capital L-O-R-D. That Jesus is Lord Himself. Indeed, He's the second person in the Trinity, and He is God. And believe that He is Lord or kurios, the master in your life. Meaning, he should be the one leading your life, not you anymore. He should be the one who would be controlling your life. He, he will be your master, and you will be his follower, your slave, your servant, his servant. And your life will be all about him. To confess that God is God, and you are not. And to believe in your heart by confessing in your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and he will be your Lord, your master, your Savior. And also to change the way you live your life because the best 
evidence of a changed life is obedience. And obey, obedience to, to God, obedience to what the Bible says, because the Bible is our roadmap to this life. So the best way to know if that person has really been changed by God, if that person has really believed in God, is that person having a changed life. Without it, then all will just be lip service. So how should we respond? It's very simple. It's very basic. It's kindergarten. It's cliche. We all know this. But the sad truth is we know this by head but not by heart. So we are to admit, believe, confess. The Bible says in Romans 10, 9, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. That is the ABC. To admit, believe, and confess. And you will be saved. That is how we should respond rightly to Jesus Christ as God. There's one poet that described Jesus as God by saying, what do we need in God that we do not find in Christ? God is not beyond him, but in him. He brings God. In him, God comes. Emmanuel. In Jesus Christ, we meet God. He's one with the inmost heart of God. His life is a personal disclosure of the life of God. Like man, he walked. Like God, he talked. His words were oracles. His deeds were miracles. Of God, the true expression of man, the finest specimen. Full orb humanity, crowned with deity. No trace of infirmity, no taint of iniquity. Behold the man, behold thy God. Veiled in flesh, the Godhead see. Hail, incarnate deity. Jesus Christ is the one and only God, our one and only hope, my one and only Savior, the one and only, one and only. May your life be touched by Christ. May your life be changed by Christ. And may today and the rest of your life be a journey towards Christ as your Lord and Savior, the love of your life. Let's pray. Father, we thank you because indeed, you have reminded us time and time again that you have loved us so much. Father, forgive us because we just <clears throat> push aside the truth and live our own ways, thinking that we have all the time in this world. Father, forgive us because we neglect you. Forgive us because we deny Christ. Forgive us, Lord, because we trust ourselves so much that we only run to you when we are in dire need and we have nothing. Father, I pray that this morning, to those who are watching and listening, <clears throat> I pray that all of us would really surrender our lives to you, that we would, in our hearts, believe that Jesus Christ is God, that Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins, that wherever we are and whoever we are, Lord, your love has came down for us. Thank you for paying the price that we could not pay and dying the death that we should have died. Father, we thank you for your love, for your saving love. And I pray that this time on, from this moment and on, Lord, our lives will be for you and only for you. And may our lives emanate Christ-likeness in everything we say, do. And Lord, I pray that as a church, as one body, we can showcase that love, not just at home, not just in our devotion time, but we can showcase that love for one another and in our society and show the people around us that truly Jesus Christ is the one and only one and only, the Son of God, the Son of Man, our Savior, our Lord. Father, we praise you. May the love of the Lord, the fellowship of the Trinity, and may the grace and faithfulness of the Lord be upon you. In Jesus Christ we pray. Amen and amen.
I have searched many years on end. There was none that my soul. My soul cries out for your presence in here. This very hour for your presence.